World leading brain cancer research is happening right here in Toronto. We're in a sick kids lab. Dr. Michael Taylor, a Hi. neurosurgeon, joins me. And uh, mm -hmm. tell me about some of your research because you're learning from the past. Right, so in the past we've always thought of cancer as a static portrait, like that picture of your grandfather sitting over the mantel place and never changed over time. And we did all of our research on the first samples that we would take out in the operating room. But then we would use our new drugs on children that had a lot of treatments, like chemotherapy and radiation. But what we've realized now is that cancer, just like a human, changes over time and it has a life cycle. Mm -hmm. So just like you can go from a caterpillar to a cocoon to a moth, in the beginning we were doing all of our research on the caterpillar stage of cancer, but then trying to use our new drugs, not on the cocoon, but actually on the moth stage. And not surprisingly, because the drugs are designed against the caterpillar, they don't work against the moth. Right. right? So it's important to understand DNA. It's important to understand the, the DNA, and it's important to understand how the biology of the cancer changes over its lifetime. In particular, in childhood brain cancer, it spreads, and it covers the surface of your brain mm -hmm. until it chokes it to death. Kind of like all those moths are stuck on tar paper, mm -hmm. and th that's usually the cause of death. So what we're doing now in this new project that's very generously funded by the Ontario Institute for Cancer Research to the tune of $9.2 million mm -hmm. is that instead of looking at the early forms of cancer, instead of looking at the caterpillars, we're actually looking at the advanced form of cancers that kills kids. And by doing that, we're going to sequence these cancers, figure out where their weakness is, and hopefully develop new drugs that will help children in Ontario and around the world. So show me what you're doing with the DNA in this lab. So what John's doing here is he has some DNA that's d been dissolved and has been isolated. It's human DNA. Mm -hmm. And what he can do is he can take the DNA that's in solution and add a, a second chemical to it. And when he does that, you can actually see the human genome falling out of the solution. And you can see it there as a white lump. If you see that gooey white lump in there, mm -hmm. that's the human genome. That's human DNA, all six billion base pairs long of, of that child's genome. We can now send that off to the Ontario Institute of Cancer Research and sequence it, and maybe by doing that, understand the drugs that would be better treatments than the current treatments for children with brain cancer. And what this means is that you can create drugs which will actually target the What we want is that drugs state. that actually kill the cancer, because yeah. a lot of our drugs didn't do that that well before, but also drugs that don't damage the child, right? It's a lot more difficult to treat a growing child than it is to treat an, an adult who's not growing anymore. 